All right, it seems like we're starting to level off here. So welcome everyone to the CBS Experience Series for the, this week we'll be focusing on the Paul Milstein Center for Real Estate. Um, I'm so happy to be joined by different members of our Paul Milstein Center team. Um, I'm gonna let them introduce themselves in a minute or so, but just to give everyone a rundown of what to expect over the next hour or so, um, we're going to be overviewing the Milstein Center from a high level view, um, talking about the real estate program that's offered here at Columbia Business School, as well as the student experience. And we will also save some time for a Q&A session. Uh, so feel free to save up your questions, post them in the Q&A box, and we will go through them towards the end of the presentation. Um, but with that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to our Milstein Center team. Great, thank you, Josie. Welcome everyone, thank you for joining today. Um, my name is Kristen Svenningson, and I'm gonna share with you a bit more about the Paul Milstein Center for Real Estate, what it is, what it does. I'm gonna introduce who's involved with the center and its activities. Um, and I'm gonna share some more information with you about the MBA real estate program and talk about some of its requirements and how it is structured. So I'll start with the Milstein Center leadership team. The Milstein Center is led by Chris Mayer, David Sherman, and myself. Professor Chris Mayer and David Sherman co-direct and lead the strategic vision for the center and they construct the curriculum for the MBA real estate program. Professor Mayer's research and expertise are in housing cycles, mortgage markets, debt securitization, and commercial real estate valuation. He's actually been in the press quite a bit lately discussing home buying and some of the challenges currently uh, that people are currently experiencing there. David Sherman, in addition to co-directing the center, is senior advisor and chairman of the investment committee at BGO Strategic Capital Partners. That is formerly Metropolitan Real Estate, which is a real estate investment management business that he co-founded and which was acquired by Bentel Green Oak in 2021. He is also an adjunct professor in the program and he currently teaches a popular course on distressed real estate investing. His expertise is in real estate investment, financing and analysis. As I said, my name is Kristen Svenningson and I am the managing director of the center. I have been at Columbia Business School since 2014 when I transitioned from the real estate industry to higher education. Prior to CBS, I was with SL Green Realty where I ran the operation of their short-term leasing office solutions business called Emerge 212. I am a graduate of Teachers College, Columbia University with a master's in higher and post-secondary education. Um, a little fun fact about me, I have a professional casting credit on a Showtime series. My early career was in entertainment. Um, I have an undergraduate degree in theater. So I say that in a, in, you know, a way of sharing that there are many paths into real estate. Um, in my role as managing director, I am charged with executing and delivering the center strategic vision, priorities, annual agenda, and curriculum with a team of highly skilled administrators who I am pleased to introduce you to uh, right now. So I will ask the Milstein Center team to say hello. Kristen. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Angela Lee. I am the Senior Associate Director here at the Milstein Center. Um, I've been here just over 10 years now. I started back in 2013. Uh, before Columbia, I was working in the family business, um, doing skincare and operating a uh, beauty industry. Um, for the family business. My main function here is to oversee and manage the administration of the real estate program. Uh, Kristen will go into further detail about this, but we offer 13 real estate courses here, and it's my job to uh, make sure that these courses run and run smoothly throughout the year uh, for the students. So I work closely with our faculty members. Um, I also work with students on sourcing employment opportunities throughout the year, whether it's full-time or um, internships. Um, and a little fun fact is that I'm headed to Canada tomorrow to go dog sledding in Banff. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Laura Graffiti. I'm the Senior Associate Director of Programs and Operations here at the Paul Milstein Center. Um, I have, this summer will be two years for me here in the center. I work predominantly with our students in student-facing programming. I work very closely with the Real Estate Association. Allie Max probably gets an email from me every other day. Um, so I work very closely with our students along with some general operations and communications for the center. Um, prior to working here, I have worked in various student affairs capacities um, at Columbia School of Professional Studies 
Studies, along with Barnard College and Sotheby's Institute of Art. Um, my fun fact is I was named after Laura Ingalls Wilder. Hi, everyone. I am Maria Farah. I'm an associate director, so I work with alumni community and industry engagement. So once everyone who is a prospective student becomes a student and then graduates, that's when I'll start working with you. And I plan some of our great alumni events that Kristen will speak to later. So before joining the Milstein team, I was actually on um, an admissions officer at Columbia Business School. So I transitioned to the Milstein Center about a year and a half ago, and I've been with uh, Columbia Business School for nearly four years now. And my fun fact is I'm going to Honduras in a couple of weeks, so I'm very excited. Lots of great traveling amongst the Milstein Center team. Thank you. Um, we are also delighted to have a student leader with us today from the Real Estate Association. So Ali Mack Jinx is going to, uh, she's gonna share some remarks a little bit later in the program, but Ali Mack, would you introduce yourself? Of course. Um, again, I'm Allie Mack. I am one of the co-presidents of the Real Estate Association at Columbia Business School. I will graduate this May, sadly. Um, originally, I'm from Columbus, Georgia, and prior to business school, I got a degree in industrial engineering and went on to work at Capital One and consumer lending, so rotated around in a bunch of their different U.S. credit card programs. I realized during the pandemic, like many people, I wasn't super excited about my day job. So I ultimately decided I wanted to go to a graduate program in order to make a transition to the real estate industry. Um, so I chose Columbia for a number of reasons, chief of which was uh, the Paul Milstein Center. It's it's incredible. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. And you'll hear a ton um, from Kristen today, but happy to answer any questions on why I chose CBS for real estate. Um, over the summer, I was an investment associate at Beachwald Residential, which is a small multifamily owner operator that operates all over the tri-state and uh, Sunbelt area. So really great uh, experience to kind of transition to the industry, uh, post MBA and targeting roles in real estate investment management and private equity. Uh, my fun fact is also travel related. I am doing a global immersion program. Um, which is a course uh, provided through Columbia Business School, uh, which will allow me to go to the Philippines for this for spring break. So leaving um, for a little bit of pre-Philippines travel uh, next week. So very excited about that. Great. Thank you, Ali Mack. Okay. So let's get into talking about the Paul Milstein Center for Real Estate. So the MBA real estate program was developed at Columbia Business School in the early 90s with a small set of classes that were focused on real estate finance. And then the Center for Real Estate was endowed in 2001 by the Milstein family to support the growth of the curriculum and real estate initiatives, and also to expand the resources available to support a range of real estate activities and opportunities for students, alumni, and industry. The Milstein Center manages and supports all functions of real estate education and relative industry programming at Columbia Business School. So what that means is that the center will be the focal point of real estate activity during your time at CBS. Um, as you've heard probably mentioned, I think Maria mentioned it earlier, that um, the center gets involved in the full like life cycle of the MBA student to alumni experience. So we really do um, you know, have touch points with prospective and admitted students. We have a lot of touch points with current students, obviously. And then we are very involved in the alumni experience, which I'll talk a bit more about um, as we continue. So to summarize, the center administers the real estate curriculum. We support a faculty research platform. We host the largest alumni professional network at the business school called the Real Estate Circle. We connect industry partners to the program and to students, most often C-suite, through our prestigious Real Estate Forum Advisory Group. And lastly, and perhaps most importantly, the center partners with the Real Estate Association in various ways to deliver a robust programming agenda of more than 40 events per year for students, along with a set of resources that complement the classroom learning and support efforts with recruitment. Now, a few specifics about the MBA real estate program. We call it a program because it encapsulates many things. It is not just real estate coursework. With the support of the Milstein Center, the real estate curriculum is complemented by a myriad of student activities, international study opportunities, and deep support for real estate recruiting. For those who wish to focus on real estate while at Columbia Business School, it is an opt-in 
self-selected program within the full-time MBA program. So what that means is there's no formal application process to the real estate program beyond your CBS admissions process. Once admitted, students can begin taking real estate courses once their core has been completed. Your real estate coursework will be your elective coursework once your core has been completed. So to focus your studies in real estate, it is expected that one, you take real estate finance along with nine other credits of real estate electives. And what that typically looks like is at least three, but more often than not, four or more real estate courses. And two, that you identify yourself to both the center and the career management center that you are going to be recruiting in real estate and can be included in the MBA real estate resume book. That typically means that you're meeting with your CMC advisor and or one of the real estate executive in residence once a semester. Now, in terms of how the courses are laid out in the real estate program, real estate finance is the foundational gateway course. It is a prerequisite for all other real estate courses. There is an exemption exam, which is optional. Um, and it is the only real estate course that is offered every term. And that's really important to note um, because if you are serious about studying real estate, then you need to plan ahead as best as possible. Um, the way that the program is designed, our set of courses are really designed to build upon one another in many ways. Um, and so what that means is that every course besides real estate finance are only offered one time a year. So you really do need to look at the full picture of real estate courses at the onset of your MBA journey and decide what is most important to you and what is essential that you want to take during your time here. Um, we'll get into the courses in, in a minute, but um, uh, what that means is if you're entering the MBA program in August, you must plan to take real estate finance in your spring term. And if you're entering in the J term, you'll take real estate finance in your summer term. Um, this is a quick slide to share with you a snapshot of the real estate faculty. There are currently six full-time faculty members who, who teach in the program, along with 11 adjunct faculty who are leaders in industry, um, at, in addition to teaching in the program. We are also very fortunate to have two dedicated executive executives in residence who are aligned with the Milstein Center and work one-on-one -on -one with students who are studying real estate on their recruiting process. Um, the next few slides, I'll move through pretty quickly as this information is all available on our website as well, but I did want to just touch on it uh, for the purposes of, of a fuller picture. Um, the program is currently offering 13 real estate courses, which are listed here. Um, it'll be nearly impossible to take all of them at CBS, um, but there are many to choose from. Um, all of our courses are rooted in finance. This next slide is a prerequisite map showing what I just discussed. Real estate finance is a requirement and it's gonna be your gateway course to everything else. Um, there are a few other pre and co-requisites in the program. So just be sure to think about your courses at the onset of your MBA journey, as I had mentioned earlier, because planning accordingly is going to be really important if there's a very specific class you wanna make sure that you capture while you're here. Um, the Milstein Center also initiates and underwrites many resources for students to help build their industry knowledge um, and the vernacular and to support their coursework and recruiting. Some of those resources are listed here. For example, we provide instructor-led Argus training for the Real Estate Association once a semester, and we underwrite an independent real estate modeling accelerator program for those wishing to enhance their skill set alongside their coursework. There is often curiosity about the jobs that our students take after business school, so we've included a slide here breaking down the industry segments for the class of 2023. This is similar to most years. Um, we see most, we see the largest majority typically head into roles that fall into the investment management private equity category. Um, followed by that is development. Um, and then in the class of 2023, the third largest group was real estate investment banking, uh, with the largest majority staying in or around the New York metro area, 10% um, uh, taking roles internationally. Uh, this is a snapshot of the prior year full-time hiring firms. Again, this is information that is available on our website. So this is sort of just a quick, quick snapshot. I'm going to move through these quickly. And this is a snapshot of the prior year internship hiring firms. Um, I'll make a note here that if you plan on recruiting for full-time opportunities in real estate, it is nearly essential that your summer internship be in real estate. So it's just something that you need to be thinking about at the onset, um, when you begin uh, business school. 
especially if you're planning on transitioning into real estate during your time in business school. But all of that said, we have an excellent team in place between the Milstein Center, the Career Management Center, and our executives and residents who work as a coordinated real estate advising team and are there to support you throughout your journey. Real estate recruiting is an enterprise process. There are some firms that participate in the formal on-campus recruiting process, which takes place in January, but more of the real estate recruiting is done off of that standard cycle and happens later in the spring. To help with that, the Real Estate Association, in partnership with the Milstein Center, hosts a big recruiting event for employers to meet students in March. And that event is actually happening at the end of this week, where we have 30 to 40 different firms coming to campus um, to meet with current students who are looking for roles in real estate, both internships and full time. Uh, as I've mentioned earlier, the Milstein Center also keeps an up to date resume book that can be shared with employers, alumni, board members, industry organizations who are hiring at a moment's notice. I won't spend too much time on this, but you know, you've heard it mentioned a little bit already today. The Milstein Center coordinates one of the largest alumni networks at the school called the Real Estate Circle. Membership spans across 15 US states and 42 graduation years and includes members in the UK, Latin America, and Abu Dhabi. We host uh, between 18 and 20 events per year for alumni, including two major conferences for two major conferences, faculty thought leadership uh, seminars, executive education opportunities, site tours, guided speed networking, and social events. So we point this out to, to highlight for you that once you graduate, there are still so many ways to engage and to continue building your a network through Columbia Business School. Um, through our Real Estate Forum Advisory Group and our Real Estate Circle, we invite more than 100 guest speakers into the classroom every year. Um, one last slide on the center before Allie Mack shares a bit about her experience as a student. This is sort of a summary of our events that we present through the center. We present upwards of 60 events per year with 40 or more being specifically curated for students to engage with industry, meet alumni, learn about different types of roles, different industry verticals, et cetera. Some of those include workshops, lunch and learns, distinguished speaker programs, panels, employment treks to other cities, international study tours, and, acad and academic competitions. We average one to two events per week on behalf of the center during the height of the semester. So we will certainly keep your schedule full of real estate activities um, if that sounds exciting to you. So I will pause there on the Milstein Center and the MBA program and invite Ali Mack to share a little bit about her experience as a student in the real estate program and as a, a student leader in the real estate association. Yeah, thanks, Kristen. Um, I th I'll go over kind of the stuff on the real estate association really quickly and then can kind of speak about um, anything else about my experience and then we can maybe cover anything else you want to have answered through the Q&A at the end. Um, but again, we have about within the real estate association, there's about 250 current members and we have 38 board members. You'll find, um, that, that 250 number like really comprises both students like me that are really focused on recruiting in real estate and plan to have a career, um, in real estate. But then there's also a lot of members that may have family business or, um, they, uh, plan on investing in real estate on the side where real estate may not be their core job. So we do tend to cater, that group is large, and we do tend to cater to uh, a wide variety of students. But you'll find that the actual students that are focusing on real estate tend to be about 30 to 50 students per class. And so that's one of my favorite things um, about being in real estate at CBS is getting that kind of tight knit group and having um, those people that I'm both friends with, but plan to work with uh, for the rest of my career. Um, on a few other things that the Real Estate Association covers with a lot of support from the Paul Milstein Center, we have a lot of networking events. So that tends to comprise monthly social events, quarterly mixers. We might have mixers with um, other business schools. We had one with um, Harvard Business School a few weeks ago. Um, we tend to have one with uh, NYU's uh, business program, Stern, like once a semester. Um, and then we also like network with the other Columbia graduate real estate program. So we might have a mixer with uh, the master's in, in real estate development at Columbia, or we might network with the uh, law students that are interested in real estate. So a lot of like touch points where you can really get to know uh, students your age. 
um, or that are in the same situation as you. Uh, we do a ton of site tours. So that tends to be one to two a month where we'll get to go to um, different buildings in New York. We went to one Vanderbilt and got a uh, tour with, with SL Green a few weeks ago. We go to Hudson Yards a lot with uh, Related. Um, so those are like super cool experiences and something that like you really don't get the opportunity to do unless you are in an organization like this. We have a lot of, I actually have some friends that like join the Real Estate Association just so that they can have access to some of these site tours. Um, we also do treks. So we do two domestic treks a year, one a semester and then an international trek each year. This past fall, we went to Austin, Texas. This semester, we'll go to Boston. Um, and then for spring break, we'll actually go to India. So Kristen is uh, joining that group next week. Um, but there's, I think there's about like 30 students that are going to India and we'll do a bunch of different company visits um, while there. In terms of mentorship, we, we do assign like mentors between uh, alumni and current students and then between the first and second years, which provides um, any of that additional support that you need, especially um, if you are a career switcher, having the kind of mentorship and guidance of folks that have been through a little bit more than you have. Um, again, we've talked a little bit about careers, but just um, there's a lot of um, initiatives that we try and do within the Real Estate Association to make sure that every student feels really supported in their recruiting journey. Um, case competitions, we have very, we've participated in various case competitions this year. Last week, our, we had a Columbia Business School team go to the UNC um, development competition at Keenan Flagler, and we took home the first place uh, prize, which included a $15,000 check to our students. So that was uh, super exciting. Um, I'm on a team that's, uh, that competed in some a preliminary uh, case competition at MIT, and my team, uh, along with another team from Columbia Business School, is advancing to the finals in London at the end of March. Um, so these are like super cool opportunities to kind of use what you're learning in class to um, really apply that to uh, some real world examples. And then I just wanted to highlight a few other of the like BPs, board members that are supporting um, different initiatives. So we make sure we have BPs that are thinking about diversity, equity, inclusion, um, our international students, our executive MBA students, which are a great resource for us. They're the ones that are currently working in the field and can kind of provide um, a lot of connectivity for our current uh, full-time students. Um, so that's just a few things that we manage within the Real Estate Association. Um, I, I, as I kind of teed up at the beginning, when I was thinking about business schools, uh, Columbia just seemed like the most obvious choice to me. I think given this dedicated um, center and the Paul Milstein Center for Real Estate, like it is it is just so important. Like I feel like I always have the resources to do anything I want if it's personal, professional development within the industry. Um, and then I think like additionally, just being in New York is so important. Like all of these coffee chats, they're going to occur in New York. Other students that might go to other business schools, they have to come to New York to do the coffee chats. Um, so I, I think it's just been an incredible experience and happy to chat like any more about any particular questions that would be helpful. Well, thank you so much to all of you for sharing a lot more about the Milstein Center and the Real Estate Association. Um, we're going to go ahead and open it up to Q&A, so feel free to drop your questions in the Q&A box. To get us started, though, I do see that we have a question about internship recruiting. Um, so what I do want to say is, you know, you mentioned earlier, Kristen, that holding a real estate internship is essential for pursuing that full-time offer. Uh, what advice do you have for students in the recruitment process for internships and also um, you know, how does that relate to in-semester internships for J-term students as well? Sure. Um, a couple things, There's a lot in, in that question, but a couple, a couple yes. of questions. Yeah. Um, so the way that the MBA real estate program is designed is that it is built for someone who either is coming to business school with real estate experience and maybe looking to fine tune their 
the, a, a specific area of their skill set or build additional leadership skills through the MBA program or someone who doesn't have real estate experience. So it's sort of it's for both types of, of students coming into the program. So, you know, the reason we say that it is essential to get an internship between your first and second year for um, if you're looking to recruit in real estate is because having some sort of real estate experience on your resume is going to be important. That said, we have many people come to the program as, and I use, you know, quote unquote switchers who are coming from a, you know, different industry and using business school as a time to, to pivot into real estate. Um, but it is important for, especially for those folks um, to really hit the ground running um, and sort of prioritize real estate activities, initiatives, and learning um, when they get here um, so that they can really um, immerse themselves in the real estate community to start learning about um, the industry. And, um, you know, because you can't take your first real estate class until your second semester, what you do is you hit the ground running by joining the real estate association, start participating in events and activities, start hearing you know, discussions about real estate, start learning what um, trade papers are available to you through the Milstein Center, through the REA, what should you be reading daily and thinking about? Um, how can you make yourself armed with more information to start having coffee chats with alumni, even if you haven't started taking your real estate courses yet? Um, there's lots of things that the center helps make available to you. Um, but but really joining the REA and start participating in activities is going to help you along that way, along the process. Um, you know, people do it every year. So, you're, you know, you wouldn't be coming, you wouldn't be the first one coming to the program, you know, without real estate experience, feeling a little bit behind. You're not, um, you know, coming in, just knowing though, that, that you really do have to put your head forward towards, towards real estate and, and start thinking about it early on is just, you know, the most important aspect about it. Does that answer all of what you asked, Josie? That was great. Um, I would also like to kind of add on what is different for pursuing in-semester internships. Sure. Yeah. So, you know, formally the school's position on in-semester internships is that they are not necessary. Um, and we don't necessarily uh, look for in-semester opportunities or seek them out on behalf of our students. We work very hard to help find opportunities or help bring opportunities to the school for summer internships. That said, many students do take in semester internships. It really is a matter of what your load, your course load, your life load, your you know what you're what you're capable of, um, and what's important to you, and what you might need to learn or want to learn. Um, you know. If you're doing sort of the full the full two years um, and you're doing a summer internship, you know our feeling is that should be enough um, for you to recruit then the following year. That you don't also need a mid semester internship. Um, you know if you are coming in J term, depending on what your schedule looks like in the summer and your block week courses, you know that there there might be an opportunity for you to fit in something short um, if an opportunity presents itself um, towards the second half of the summer. Um, these are not guarantees or finite answers on things, but, you know, if things align for you that way, we, I've seen students do that. Um, and I've also seen, you know, students hold semest in semester internships that are very successful and very helpful to them, but we just don't say that it's a necessary thing for anybody to do. Um, you know, we also want to remind you that part of your job as a student is really building your network and taking part in, you know, the events and the activities and the initiatives that are here for you as a student that, you know, won't be there for you in a year or two. So to the best of your abilities that you can focus on that um, and then focus your summer on an internship, um, that is that is sort of our position there. But but we've seen many students handle it in many different ways, and it's really up to you you know, what, what works for you time-wise, financially, et cetera. There's, there's a lot of factors that you need to consider um, when you're in business school. Absolutely. Thank you, Kristen. I think that really spoke well to how different the MBA experience can be for every student um, because they're pursuing from different professional backgrounds and, you know, having different course loads while here too. Um, this next question is for Allie Mack. Um, they first wanted to say congratulations on your win at the UNC case competition. Um, and then also- it, was, it wasn't my win. It was another group <laughs> of students at CBS, but I'm very happy for them. I'm proud of them. <laughs> well, great for CBS. Yeah. Um, 
can you speak to the format of classes in the real estate program, um, as well as, you know, do you have a particular favorite class that you've taken? Yes. Um. So the format, I, I think the question is kind of like, is it a case study? Is it traditional or a blend? Um. The format really does tend to be a blend. Um. We have focused a lot on cases, and I think that's like a great way to kind of drive a point home and really think about like what you're learning in class um, looks like in action. But then there are um, typically some more like traditional lecture style or discussion style courses uh, or classes within the course. Um, I think in terms of my favorite class, I've, I've gotten to take a bunch of the different courses through uh, the real estate courses at CBS. Um, I really, really enjoyed real estate finance with Boaz Abramson. Um, he, I think just like, it was a great foundation for me. Um, aside from that, have really enjoyed, I'm currently in a real estate analytics course. So a lot of my background skill is in data analysis. And there's just a huge opportunity for us to be using um, machine learning and, and other data algorithms to like think about trends in the real estate industry and how we can be making investment decisions. And so that class is with Sten Van Neuerberg, who was also an incredible professor. Um, really enjoying that. I took a prop tech course with uh, Professor Piskorski. That was incredible. Um, I'm currently in a private equity, real estate private equity course this semester, where we get to do a semester long um, project with a real company, helping them with a real uh, investment decision. So th there's just been a really wide variety of classes, and I've, I've enjoyed them um, a ton. Great. Thank you so much. Um, so this question is, you know, for the whole team, um, Ali Mack as well. Um, we're getting a few questions about the international aspects of the Milstein Center and what international opportunities there are. Would you mind sharing um, what opportunities there are again? And then um, I know that you said you're going to India soon, but maybe some past experiences, um, different international trips too. Sure, I'll jump in on that one. So the the primary opportunity is the international real estate study tour that happens every year. Um, you know, Ali Mack talked about her trip to the Philippines, which she's doing, which is not necessary, which is not specific to real estate. There is one specific study tour per year that is dedicated to real estate that is run by the Real Estate Association in partnership with one of our faculty members. It's an incredible experience. Um, and uh, it, it's been a part of our program for the last 15 or so years. Um, and the intention behind this real estate study tour is to really offer um, a, a, a deep a, a dive into a market, a crash course into a market very unlike the US um, um, to really sort of immerse yourself with local firms, local projects, um, uh, local government agencies in, in another country. And so this year we're going to India um, in it, next week, actually, there's a group of 24 students that are joining along with Professor Brian Lancaster. And the way that they're sort of organized is that the student leaders really work to build the agenda with the professor. And then the professor, you know, connects the dots on things that are being learned uh, and taught throughout the week um, and sort of summarizes it into, um, into a, a larger discussion that ties back to what you're learning in the classroom. So, you know, in the last few years, this year's trip is to India, uh, to four different cities in India. So there'll be two, inter two intercontinental flights over the course of the week. It's an intense week of studying real estate in another country, but they are, they are truly, truly amazing experiences. Um, last year we went to Sydney um, for a week. Um, we've done Mexico City. We've done you know, tons of countries um, have have been part of this program. Uh, we have them listed on our website along with um, along with some photos as well. But um, but it's one of the one of very few um, specific study tours that is run in partnership with the Chazen Institute that is dedicated to one particular um, industry um, and one particular student group. So the REA's trip has been um, in existence for quite some time and, and we have a pretty good formula for delivering a really superb study tour once a year. Uh, so hopefully that touches on that. Yeah, absolutely. It sounds amazing and I, I wish I could go. Um, but a follow-up question to that in the comments chat is are there any prerequisites requisites or requirements for people interested in attending those 
So the stu for the study tour, no. Um, the, if if at any point we develop sort of a global immersion course, which is the study tours are not for credits. So those are those are extracurricular in nature, but are delivered in an academic manner, but also have a, a, a lot of fun and sort of social component to it as well. Um, the global immersion course, if we create one in the future, may have a prerequisite, but the study tour does not. The only requirement at this point um, is that you are a member of the Real Estate Association. Um, and, and truly the reason for it is because they are very heavy real estate tours. And so if you are not sort of interested and and almost passionate about real estate, it might feel overwhelming to those on who who, who attend the uh, the real estate specific study tours um, because there there are heavy days of meetings and site visits, and so it, it you know we definitely recommend it being sort of a passion of yours um, to participate in one of them. But otherwise, there are no prerequisites to participate in the international study tours. Great, I'll, thank you. That's really helpful. I'll say just like many of the opportunities that are provided through the Real Estate Association and the Paul Milstein Center, um, many of the you know international tours, the the domestic tours, treks, um, case competitions. That's typically rewarded to the students that are the most involved. Um, so I think just being like really involved with the Real Estate Association, making sure that um, you're attending as many things as possible. That it just makes more sense for us to kind of use that as like a prerequisite system. All right, for the next question, I'm gonna turn it over to you again, Ali Mack. Um, and this question is, you know, what led you to pursue an MBA at CBS as opposed to maybe two more years in the real estate industry or a master's in real estate? Yeah, I, I, th I think, it was necessary for me to attend some sort of graduate program, given that I do not have like a traditional real estate background. Um, so I can't, I, I saw like a question through that and I can kind of maybe answer that second. Um, but I think as I was deciding between the different uh, graduate programs, it made the most sense given my, I have an undergraduate engineering degree. So really like learning uh, finance and business was so, so important to me. Um, and I think, Really, as I've gotten to CBS, like the network that you have access to is incredible. And so you're getting a lot of value out of the academics for sure. But I think the access to the network and especially in the real estate industry, you're, you're nothing without your network. Um, and so that has been what is like really paid dividends for me. And has been the reason that I chose like a business program versus going to Columbia's like master's in real estate development program. So um, that, that was what made the most sense for me in terms of like comparing like two years in school versus two years in the industry. I think like the Columbia business school email address is invaluable. You'll hear this, like I'm sure in most of your info sessions, but being able to like reach out to these high powered executives, um, and like network with them is is just not something you're going to get probably from two years in the industry as like an analyst or um, junior associate. So I think for me, it's just paid dividends. And then there's a, there's a ton of people in the club that have given up two years in the industry in order to, um, to come to this program and maybe explore other parts of the industry that they may not have seen as accessible to them before. Great. Thank you so much for sharing, Allie Mack. Um, I am getting a question from someone who's interested in a JD MBA, which for anyone who's not familiar is a dual degree program that uh, combines a law degree at Columbia Law School with an MBA at Columbia Business School. Um, have you seen at the center anyone who's had a focus in real estate and was able to kind of overlap that JD MBA with the center and classes available? Yeah, we have. Um, it's a smaller group, but we've we've definitely seen students over the years do this. Um, and you know, it's just a matter of you might not be able to take as many real estate courses, um, depending on sort of what your your course availability is. Um, you know, there's also there's actually another center at the school called the Richmond Center, which is shared by the business school and the law school, which often makes 
these shared experiences between the two programs um, a lot easier for students. Um, but we have had a, a small number of students, you know, over the years who have done uh, the JD MBA with a specific interest in real estate. Uh, it's many of them sort of looking to go into real estate law of some capacity. Um, but there are, you know, we, we have seen that, of course. Thank you. Yeah, that's really helpful. And I've definitely um, spoken with prospective students as well interested in, in both intersecting um, the legal and the business aspects of real estate. So that's great. Um, this question is, a, you know, we have a lot of interest in the treks and the site tours. Um, have you focused any site tours in the past on public housing or bringing equity to lower income housing areas? Is that for uh, Ali Mac or for or whoever? For anyone organizing a trek who has had experience with this. We, I mean, I'll, I'll say, I think most of our focus on like public housing um, and kind of related, you know, affordable housing, uh, that type of thing has definitely, we've covered that a ton through our um, guest speakers that the Paul Milstein Center has brought onto campus. Um, so that's definitely a topic that we are, we have a lot of students who are super interested in and, and recruit for. Um, in terms of treks, our treks typically are like more employment focused. So we tend to go um, to places and do company visits or do uh, site tours of like properties that are under construction. So that that typically hasn't really focused on, you know, those social equity, uh, affordable housing um, components. In terms of our site tours, we tend to like go to a lot of like trophy like assets, although we have been to some multifamily developments that do have some of those affordable components. And so we have been able to see um, uh, in a multifamily development where um, the, the differences between, you know, their their market rate components and their affordable components, which tend to be pretty similar because of requirements. But um, I would say that's the extent that we look at that type of thing through our site tours. Um, but definitely a, it's a huge topic on campus, uh, both through our guest speakers and um, is included in a ton of our uh, curriculum. We have a class uh, that Brian Lancaster leads on um, residential real estate. Um, and he touches on that topic a ton. I know Boaz Abramson, who teaches our real estate finance course, he uh, is actually doing a ton of research on um, how you can in, like disincentivize homelessness. So it's definitely a topic that is top of mind uh, very frequently for us. Yeah, I'll just thank you, Ali Mack. I'll add to that too, that um, both affordable housing and impact investing is woven throughout the real estate curriculum in, in each of the courses in different ways. And that's sort of what I was mentioning about how our courses build upon one another. Um, our faculty actually convene each semester to review sort of their syllabus, what they're teaching in courses, where they're leaving things, how they're connecting the dots to other courses. So um, that's that's definitely a priority in our program. Um, we have in the past offered a course called um, Social Impact uh, investing and development. Um, the course is not being offered right now. It is in a faculty transition, which usually takes time when a course is being redeveloped. Um, so it is something that we will likely offer again in the future, but is not in our current curriculum. Um, but when it's not in the curriculum, especially, you know, we focus in the center on offering um, events and programs, which, uh, which bring these topics um, to conversation as well, usually once or twice a semester. Great. Thank you so much to you both for expanding on the different, you know, DEI and uh, initiatives and focus in curriculum. Um, I am getting a question, too, from someone who has a background in private equity um, and interest in sustainable infrastructure. Um, what kind of credit related funding or finance courses would you recommend that's available through the Milstein Center? Yeah, there is a ton of courses I would say are related to this. Um, I took a class on project finance last year, which is not technically part of the real estate curriculum, but it is all about like um, kind of how you put together a deal um, on infrastructure, specifically in developing countries. And so that's, I would say that's relevant to um, your experience. I think there's just a ton of like debt related courses that we offer through the, uh, the real estate program at CBS. Um, so we have um, like a debt markets class, there's a distressed debt class this semester as well. Um, and then I think like one of the 
topics was related to sustainability, um, sustainability and like, uh, I would say like climate change or like uh, one of the most important things to uh, the current president of uh, or dean of the Columbia Business School. And so that is very highly prioritized. Um, there's a very popular uh, business and climate change course that many students take, and it tends to be a prerequisite for other climate change courses. That's also very popular for real estate students to take because it is so relevant to um, the things we need to be thinking about as we make decisions. Yeah, I'll I'll add to what Ali Magda said too, that, um, you know, part of what's so wonderful about Columbia Business School is there's also these additional centers which support initiatives that are adjacent to real estate or connected to real estate in some manner, but might not be real estate specific. So, you know, through the Tamer Center for Social Enterprise, there's there's many initiatives uh, uh, that you would you could participate in that support sustainability uh, interests or course their their list of courses um, that they offer through the through the Tamer Center sort of like I mentioned the Richmond Center um, which are you know in support or in coordination of real estate but not necessarily real estate specific. Thank you. Um, Similar to the question about the JD MBA, um, I have another question about the executive MBA program. Um, I'm pretty sure on a previous slide you touched on the real estate um, courses for the MBA, but they wanted to ask about what real estate electives you have available for the MBA sure. program. So the real the MBA real estate program is is built for the full time MBA programs. That said, what we do have quite a bit of interest from our executive MBAs, and we do our best in the program to offer opportunities for participation from executive MBAs. So what that looks like is we do have one course that is specifically presented for EMBAs, um, and that is a combination of real estate finance and a few other things. Um, I believe it's called. Uh, Angela, correct me if I'm wrong, but real estate as an asset and a business. Correct. Yes, and that's that's our EMBA specific course. Um, uh, we also do reserve um, a, a number of EMBA seats in each of our courses. And to the best of our abilities, we do offer our courses um, as close to the start and end of the day as possible. So for those who are working full time or, you know, uh, coming to campus later or earlier, um, to the best of our abilities, uh, when we can and when faculty schedules, you know, allow, we are trying to offer them at more favorable times for those who might be working because there is a strong interest in real estate. Great. I'd also Thank add, you. like, the full time students benefit a ton from having the embas in our class. Um, again, like a lot of, we, we do have, tend to have a lot of night classes so that those embas can attend, but I think it is just so valuable hearing, um, them kind of discuss with the professor, like what's going on in the market. And I think it, it does provide like a much more rich experience for the full-time students as well. That's great to hear. Thank you, Ali Mack. My next question is actually for you as well. Um, someone asked, have you had experience navigating um, the real estate industry with the support of the executives and residence program? And if not, do you know people who have made use of the executive and residence program? Yeah, so every every student focusing in real estate uh, uses the executives and residents. As kind of Kristen teed up at the top, we do have like kind of requirements to meet with Leanne or Scott at the beginning of each semester. And I, I think that is a, an awesome requirement because they are so, so helpful to each and every one of us. Um, I have leveraged them both. Um, I think one of the most important times uh, that they came in handy for me was when I was juggling a few internship offers this time last year and really having Leanne to kind of think it through with me weigh the options and help advise me on like what would best accomplish my future goals uh, was super critical. And so definitely um, they're a very important part of uh, of our like networking and recruitment journey um, supplemented by, I would say the career management center. Um, so we also have kind of coaches, both second year coaches through that program. And we have our CMC advisors that um, I would say fill in a lot of the, those advisory roles where Leanne and Scott are going to be the people that are most knowledgeable of what, what is currently going on in the industry. And so they can kind of give you the down low or the T on uh, different companies and help guide you to uh, the best informed decision. I'd add that the, the exec and residents are really helpful in your strategy about your, your, both about your recruiting process and sort of your overall goals. 
Um, so, you know, there's a, there's something for everyone sort of in the support network while you're here and, and going through your process. You know, the CMC, there's, there's uh, resources in the CMC who are going to help you with your resume, help you with your interview skills you know, help you with the actual, the brass tacks of the process, then you're going to have, um, you know, an, an advisor from the CMC that you can talk through your your interviews with or, or sort of what your plans are. And then really the, the, the best thing to utilize the executive residence for is really your overall strategy. What are you looking to accomplish now, 10 years from now, where do you want to be? And they're going to help you think through, you know, what you as an individual need to be doing while you're in business school, what you might be want to thinking about three years out of business school, um, and, and what you can do now to help you get yourself there. Thank you. Yeah, I think that really gave a good reflection of the different layers of support that's available through the Career Management Center. You know, whether it's the second year peers who just went through the process and can help you, including the Real Estate Association, um, or, you know, full-time staff at the CMC and the executive residence. Um, if anyone's not familiar with the executive residence, it's a program we have at Columbia Business School um, that has different C-suite level executives um, come and mentor our students. Um, so Leanne, as Ali Mack mentioned, um, is Leanne Lockman, who's the president of Lockman Associates, and Scott is Scott Shapiro, who's the managing director of Evil Rock Ventures. Um, so just want to give a little background if anyone wasn't familiar, but I think I think it really goes to show how many layers and levels of support we give to our students in the recruiting process. Um, awesome. Well, that really answered my follow-up question. So thank you, Kristen, <laughs> about you know what else is you know partnered through the CMC. Um, Looking through our remaining questions now, um, do you have any advice for students looking to focus on private equity and its connection to real estate? Um, I mean, beyond sort of what we've talked about, not specifically. I mean, private equity is a huge part of our program and it's something that's mm -hmm. going to be an aspect of every one of our courses. Um, there is a specific real estate private equity course that we offer in our program. Um, it's sort of our, I put it in quotes, our, our capstone course. It's it's one of the last courses that you'll take uh, as an MBA. Ali Mack mentioned it earlier. Um, it's it's uh, it's sort of a business plan competition course in, in that you are assigned a real world sponsor um, uh, that has it that will provide either a, um, a a project that they have already worked on or something that they might be considering that they're happy to have a group of smart MBA students spend some time thinking about. Um, and and that course actually ends in a real competition that is uh, sponsored by uh, a, a board member uh, where there's real money involved for the teams that that win the competition at the end of that course. Um, it's a very interesting model for the course, um, uh, but that is our real estate private equity course specifically. But but private equity is really woven throughout um, uh, throughout our curriculum and and really the area of the industry that we see the most number of students typically go into right out of school. Great. Thank I'll you. I'll say yeah. like Columbia, Columbia Business School as the full program is just really known for their strength and uh, finance. And so I think having the the power of like the Milstein Center with their specialization in real estate and the brand of um, and like academic prowess of, of learning like uh, about all the financial concepts you need to be successful in a private equity uh, career, um, I think students tend to be pretty successful when they do recruit uh, in what is typically a very competitive space in real estate private equity. Definitely. Okay, as we only have a few minutes left, I do want to give everyone here, all the panelists, an opportunity to share um, an event that they've had the opportunity to attend or put on um, or a probing experience that has really stood out to you in your time in the Milstein Center. Uh, I mean, I'm happy to kick off. We host an event called the annual Columbia Business School Real Estate Symposium every year. And part of what I find so significant about this, um, it, you know, it's a, it's a pretty major industry conf conference, but we host it specifically for alumni of Columbia Business School. Um, so it's usually 250 to 300 alumni who gather on campus once a year for a full day 
of thought leadership. Um, but what's so interesting about it is that it's really led by a group of alumni in partnership with the Milstein Center who developed the agenda for it. And so uh, it's something that we work on for quite some time. We offer it in the fall. Um, it's something that's presented for student, uh, for alumni, but students are able to participate in it while they're in school um, uh, at, at no charge. And uh, it's just really quite a, quite a exceptional event, I think. I'll jump in next. Uh, last year was the first the inaugural year for the Women in Real Estate Summit. It was a great collaboration between the Real Estate Association here at CPS, along with Wired, which is Women in Real Estate Development over at GSAP. It was great to see cross collaboration between the programs. It was great to see a student initiative really come to life. We had some really excellent panelists come through, a great networking session after, and it was a big success. And we're hosting the second one this April. So excited for that to come. Fantastic. Yeah, that was one of the two that I was going to point out. Um, I'm Laura and I are on the committee to plan that. Um, so it's really, really important, I think. And someone made a comment about how many women we have on this call, which is incredible. The real estate industry also that doesn't always look like this. Um, and so I think like really elevating women and creating that visibility is is so important. Um the I'll name a different event. I I helped and and Laura and the Paul Milstein Center helped support an event um, that we had on Monday. The Real Estate Association partnered with the Hospitality and Travel Association, which I'm also heavily involved with, and the Gourmet Club on campus to do a joint panel where we, um, the, the main topic was how you source uh, real estate for food businesses. And so that was like a very exciting topic for many students. I, New York is such a foodie <laughs> city. And so um, we had a bunch of great panelists. We had uh, a alumni broker from Newmark Frank who moderated the panel. We had um, Kobe Levy, who um, is the owner of Prince Street, uh, which is a big restaurant group in New York. We had a like leasing director from Related and managing director from Tish and Spire, which has done a bunch of the Rockefeller Center um, revitalization. And so that was a really exciting topic. And I think just shows that there are so many like affinity applications of real estate where you can like connect with other students and other business types uh, while you're on campus and create that, that connectivity. Um, I will take this chance to plug the Bodini uh, business, business plan competition that Kristen touched upon. It's part of the private equity course. And I just find it fascinating to see the students work on real life projects with, um, you know, actual sponsors that are usually alumni from the school. So um, that's probably one of my favorites from the, from the year. Mine is definitely the symposium that Kristen uh, spoke about. I, I have a huge part of planning that, and it's always great to be able to see it come together and see what we what we put on. Awesome. Thank you all for sharing those. I think it was a great note to end on, um, especially showing how many opportunities there are to connect with the greater CBS network, um, especially alumni. Um, I know we didn't have the chance to get to every question, um, so if you do have more questions, um, if you want to go to the next slide, you are more than welcome to send additional questions here, as well as I'm going to go ahead and put the Milstein Center email in the chat for everyone. Um, one moment. There we are. And I wanna be respectful of everyone's time. So thank you so much to everyone who attended today. Thank you so much to the panelists for sharing about the Milstein Center. And I hope everyone has a great rest of your day. Thank you.